Hello. How is everyone? It's been a while. Demonis est Deus inversus. The devil or the demon is God inverted. You might remember I talked to you about changes I saw in the book of Jude that it had changed. Certain men crept in unaware, consigned to condemnation from the beginning, and they turned everything around. It was the way I remember it. It's not there anymore, oh, and it never was there, which puts it firmly in Mandela territory. I'm going to lead off here with a fast two or three minute snippet from this interview with Scott McQuaid. Uh, I mentioned him before. I said I was a member of his circle for the better part of a year. I wanted to read his stuff and I found it interesting. There were a lot of things I didn't necessarily agree with. And the same here, but I want to play a fast two or three minutes of this because, well, he's touchy about copyright. So, here we go. You to know the truth because it is only the truth that's going to help you get where you need to be. You are not a physical being. You are a spiritual being wrapped up in a, in a biological, physical sack we call the body. Okay, your soul, the freedom of your soul rather, is dependent on you learning and knowing and following the truth, and that's the bottom line. That's what Asu and many other uh, many others in, in history have tried to say, and that's what all the messengers say, and that's what I'm saying. But but I know we got a caller, but let me finish up this real this thing real quick with this Jehovah yeah. thing. Where so how do we get this tetragrammaton? YHVH to correlate to Anunnaki because everything else in this biblical this biblical story is exactly the same the potter the clay Eden Adam everything it's all the same except the names of the creator well the father pointed me to that verse in Isaiah 29 15 and 16 it says there were men who turned things backwards that's associated with the potter and the clay so I go back to the place where the potter and the clay are first mentioned and I said, this, is, this has to be what this verse is referring to. And the Father showed me I needed to undo what they did. It says they would turn things backwards. The word is hofek in the Hebrew. It means upside down, but it also means backwards. It says they would do something to turn things backwards that would be associated with the potter and the clay. And this is what they did. Aramaic is an older language than Hebrew. It preceded Hebrew. And this set of four letters called the Tetragrammaton comes directly from the Aramaic. When you transliterate Y-H-V-H, you get I-A-U-A -A in the Aramaic. I-A-U-A. -A. Well, the Father showed me that all I needed to do to get the vowels for Anunnaki was turn it back around to its original state, which is A-U-A-I, which are perfectly the vowels of the name Anunnaki, A-N-U-N-A-K-I, Anunnaki. The Anunnaki were the ones that manufactured man in Eden, or not in Eden, they, it doesn't say they made him in Eden, they made him somewhere else and put him into Eden, but the Anunnaki are the ones who did this. Here's the problem. People are saying, well, big deal. Okay, so it's the Anun so the Lord is the Anunnaki. <laughs> okay, that's, that's not the case. All right? Here's the situation. In the sixth tablet of the Enuma Elise, which is the, the Sumerian creation epic, the Anunnaki are specifically called the fallen ones. Exactly like Luke. The fallen ones. He and I part company right there. Yahweh is an inversion. It's an inversion of uh, 
the Aramaic, the vowels. But then, Demonis, S, Dias, and Versus, all of these, uh, all of these um, Kabbalists and native Hebrew speakers and good shepherds all, This is uh, that of Barham Publications. Hannibal is the reverse of Baal Hanan. Joel is the reverse of Elijah. Jehoahaz is the reverse of Isaiah. Andronicus is the reverse of Nicanor. Ash and so on and so on and so on. Jeconia is another one that they play fast and loose with. Wherever you see I like the Berean Study Bible because it says at the bottom in the footnotes, it says this is a variation on this name. Wherever you see that, you're seeing spelling, spells cast here. Um, you're seeing, well, dark magic for lack of a better phrase. And that Anak Anakim the Anakim, the fallen ones. You have to understand a little bit about astrology and understand what you're being told there. But that's a whole nother story. See, Hashem. Here's your Hebrew alphabet. The name is Moses inverted. It's reversed. All of these names. See? Like, uh, oh, what's Joel there? Joel, the reverse of Elijah. Well, you know, that's one Peter likes to quote. Good old Pete. Um, why... Why don't, why isn't this more commonly known? Why does it take some third-rate backbencher like me to drag this out? You know, these a-holes. I'm not feeling very loving tonight. These a-holes, these Babylonian priests, these dark satanic bastards. There's so much to be said about them. And so much to be said about different verses in the Bible and what they're really saying. What you're really being told. You know, this inversion business... I see now, and I didn't for a long time. I was caught up in the um, the whole unity thing, good versus evil, and, you know, how we're moving into a, a different state of consciousness. Good and evil are useful tools for teaching children what to do and what not to do. But there are a couple more layers to this that I've stumbled across in my researches that make it really important that I talk to you guys. I don't want to be doing this. See, here's the thing. I have unfortunately reached the point where I have to talk about myself, and I don't want to. My father was a farmer, a rancher. He had been a soldier when he was drafted into World War II. He was a grown man when the Depression hit. He was the baby of five. He was half-orphaned. His dad died when he was two. He was a little fella, about 160 dripping wet, about 5'6", five, 5'7", five, and he was one tough son of a bitch. I had great respect for the man, and I loved him. We called him Paul. He was our Paul. 
He was not an emotionally available man. He was very patient with children, extremely patient. But he was not demonstrative, or I would not call him kind. He was extremely patient, though. That was a blessing. He was not the source of my problems as a child, but he wasn't much of a balm or a salve either. He told me once when I was about 12 or 13 years old. He was a World War II combat veteran. He'd fought the Japanese in the Pacific. He knelt down by his bed every night to pray like a little boy. Every night. He drug us to Mass every Sunday. Sick, half dead, later, when we were older, hung over, half drunk, it didn't matter. Get your ass up, we're going to Mass. She couldn't be bothered, but he made us go to church. And this church-going man of deep religious faith, this combat veteran from World War II, told me once, he said, that there are two kinds of people in the world you need to look out for, babe. And I said, who's that, Paul? He said, Bible thumpers and flag wavers. And I never forgot that. And he finished off by telling me, they want to tell you what to believe and how to think about things. He goes, and they can't even take care of their own damned affairs. Well, a good hard look at my life has shown me that I can't take care of my own damned affairs. My life's a mess. Always has been. <clears throat> it is what it is. I'm not telling you what to believe or what to think about anything. I'm telling you what I see. I'll tell you what I believe and what I think, and on occasion I might tell you what I suspect. But I'm not going to tell you what you should believe or what you should think. You should follow your heart. You should follow your mind. You should follow your path. Now, this inversion business in Paul, let someone come in his own name and him you will receive. Both of them were talking Christ. But, there's a lot more to Paul than meets the eye. This master builder and his pal Luke. And we'll go into that in later videos. There's a lot of things I need to cover and time is getting shorter and shorter and I've been dragging my feet because I don't want to do this, but God damn it, I'm supposed to. So, <laughs> yeah, whatever. My problems are mine and yours are yours, at least for the time being. Listen, you guys be good to each other. Be kind, be forgiving. Or, you know, don't. Do whatever feels right. But, forgiveness is paramount. Kindness is paramount. Love is paramount. And as Leviathan, as she starts to surface. My personal opinion is we're going to see things get crazier and crazier and crazier. And as the ones in control try to massage things and twist things and it's the beginning of birth pains. And in the end, it'll come down to how we treat one another as to what we birth. So, with all of that being said, you guys take care of yourselves. We'll talk again sooner next time. If I can figure this damn thing out, I always have a hell of a time. Take care.